and welcome back to another episode of Generation Films. My name is American Ben. How to survive? That has been the question of man throughout time, as essential resources on Earth are finite, and even if we figure out how to clone things, a giant ball of fire in the sky grows larger by the day and will eventually envelop our planet lest Elon Musk does something about it. Of course, humans aren't worried about the sun's murderous intent when a number of other more mundane dangers threaten their lives on a daily basis. You know, disease, car crashes, anvils falling from the sky, and other stuff. People have to be careful out there. Humans are fragile, and in the world of science fiction, where there's xenomorphs and Sith Lords, one must be extra cautious as to not meet a premature demise. And then on top of all that, The Expanse's universe is possibly the most dangerous of all, as it's highly realistic relative to other science fiction. And thus, plot armor ain't gonna cut it. So for those of you dwelling in the various civilizations throughout the solar system, I want to provide for you a service that might help you survive among stars fraught with conflict and some seriously scary shit. Excuse my language to the kids out there, here's 10 rules for surviving The Expanse. The first rule is the most obvious and the most important. Stay away from the protomolecule. Simple as that. Everything else on this list can be linked to this rule in some way. Pursue this mysterious alien agent, and you're likely going to have a bad day. Do not fall victim to the allure of the protomolecule's potential and power, as so many do in so many different ways. The pursuit of the protomolecule is representative of man's inability to hold himself back from technological progress. Scientists indulge their passion, seeking to experiment on the protomolecule at the cost of the dangers such innovation might beget, and in doing so often end up dying in one way or another. We even see non-scientists attempt to get closer to the protomolecule and its related entities out of their personal curiosities, and so to perish for it. And then there are everyday people who seek to take advantage of the exploration that the protomolecule's ring gate system allows for, and also put their lives in jeopardy. This rule can also be restated as restrain your hubris. In the face of great and unknown forces in the universe, both of nature and otherwise, man has rarely shown the ability to proceed with caution and respect the relative fragility of his own being. And with that said, the second rule is don't be a hero, unless you want to die as one, that is. If you look for trouble in the soul system, you will likely find it. No one really wants to talk about this, but had the crew of the camp listened to Captain McDowell and ignored the distress signal from the Scopuli, they'd be alive today. But Jimmy Holden had to play hero and get everyone killed. Same thing with the Doniger. Captain Yao should have ignored the Knight's distress signal and moved on, but they came to save the ship and investigate the Canterbury's destruction. Yes, it was probably the dutiful thing to do, but... Not the best idea if the crew wanted to stay alive. Of course, hubris also contributed to the defeat of the Doniger, as Captain Yao did not prepare with desperation in thinking her ship superior to those of the approaching enemies. Then, the crew of the Merasmus broke this rule, of course, in delivering aid to the survivors of the Eros outbreak, which also brought them in proximity of the protomolecule, which again often means death is coming one way or another. Don't just avoid heroism either. Actively stay out of trouble. Don't pull a Souther and refuse to obey orders. As a matter of fact, don't even pull a Grigori and even question orders. Head down, do your job, and stay quiet, and you just might live to see another day yet. In the Expanse, you rise up and reject authority. You're bound to die for it. This brings us to our third rule, which is don't be bad or consort with nefarious people. This is another obvious one. While heroism will get you killed, so will doing bad things. It seems that there is some sort of karmic system in the Expanse by which those who commit evil and unjust acts will eventually pay for it. Esai actually turns out not to be that bad of a guy, but his illicit dealings eventually result in his death. Cohen seems to be a nice enough dude as well, but his subversion of the Rosinante systems for the purpose of transmitting a fake and malicious message leads somewhat indirectly to his eventual death by freak accident. Similarly, Kenzo's deceit and ruinous intentions aboard the Rosinante eventually result in his demise on Eros. Also, once again, stay away from the protomolecule. Our fourth rule is don't fall in with the OPA, unless you're okay with dying. The OPA expects that every belter in its ranks commit his life to the mission, and if needed, sacrifice himself for the greater good. And that's not really a recipe for survival, especially when the belt is the inferior state in the soul system. I mean, OPA members frequently throw themselves in harm's way for the slightest of reasons, hoping to die honorable deaths rather than live out long, cowardly lives. Trust me, my friends, the latter option is better. Live on and live well, though if you 
are really tired of Fast and Furious sequels, I can kind of understand wanting to check out early. Rule number five is unless you are a belter, stay away from the belt. Belters have been oppressed for ages and look upon enters with disdain. Sure, there are non-belters who live in the belt, and on a daily basis they live mostly in peace, but any sort of unrest that flares up could lead belters to target such people first. Furthermore, given their rough upbringings, belters are much more desensitized to violence than inners, and thus are capable of inflicting injury or death on foes or simply people they don't like with little hesitation. Inners are not cut out for belter society. Though belters are easy to escape, you just go down to the surface of a planet. Rule number six is do not trust politicians or other government officials. The Expanse's universe is one in which most humans live under massive centralized government bureaucracies that breed intrigue and corruption. To thrive within such entities, individuals must act in a Machiavellian manner. Even good-natured leaders must engage in underhanded tactics at times. Thus, to survive in the world of the Expanse, one should never take the word of any official to be the truth, and rather think as to a person's intentions in order to interpret their actions. Furthermore, no official should ever underestimate how far another would go in order to win. Not even a powerful diplomat is protected from murder should his death offer something to gain by his enemy. Rule number seven is that mercy can get you killed. Okay, maybe this hits back at the whole idea of a karmic system. Letting your enemies live might be the humane thing to do at times, but in a system fraught with intense conflict, where individuals are conditioned to be fanatically dedicated to one state, often mercy is not enough to overwhelm an enemy's hostility. Clyce Ashford lets a captured Martian naval officer aboard the Tynan live, and one of his crew members is murdered for it. Kamina let Marco and Naros go free, and this time Clyce Ashford himself is the victim of her calculated mercy. Of course, Clyce Ashford also broke the cardinal rule of don't be a hero and go looking for trouble. Rule number eight is stay away from the Brodo Molecule. No, 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 not Proto Molecule, Brodo Molecule, aka Amos Burton. Don't screw him, well, you can screw him, but don't screw with him. And definitely don't mess with his friends or you will very likely die. As a matter of fact, stay as far away from Naomi Nagata as possible as well. One wrong blink in her direction could mean death. Creepy doctors beware, Amos is that guy. On that note, rule number nine, and this is highly important, do not get into a fist fight with Bobby Draper. Martian Marines are dangerous. Bobby Draper is lethal. 9.6 out of 10.1 doctors agree her right hook is a more effective sleep aid than Ambien. If you're going to try and take Bobby on, you're going to have to catch her without her armor and use a firearm from a significant distance. Do not go hand to hand with this woman. You will lose. And if you find yourself in close proximity to her and you've pissed her off, either do what she says or run, or the People's Marine is gonna lay the smack of down. Once again, don't be a hero, don't be bad, don't fight Gundams, live a long life, capiche? Rule number 10 is own your own ship. Ultimately, almost everyone in the Expanse's universe lives in constant danger, such as the nature of life amidst constant and widespread conflict carried out by corrupt and megalomaniacal leaders. Denizens of Earth often live in desperate poverty, Martians are all tools of the state, and well, belters. The best way to survive in the soul system is to live under no master. Life on the surface of a planet leaves one vulnerable to the effects of his leader's decisions. So you could then join the military and live aboard a space vessel, but this often means putting one's life in danger for the state, a la the Doniger. The people who are in the best position to survive in the soul system are those who chart their own destinies. The crew of the Rasanante really has it best. They have their own ship which flies under no flag and are beholden to no orders but their own. Now they choose on their own to break almost all of the rules on this list save for fighting Bobby Draper who would probably knock out the Rosinante in a punch, but they don't have to do this. They could steer the Rosinante far from harm's way and live in relative peace floating around the soul system, gathering resources as needed. So that's the best way to go. You have to own your own ship and keep mobile. Living under the rule of one of the major powers will ultimately result in you being forced to break rules on this list against your will. Finally, rule number 11 is be good at science. Seriously, the Expanse's realistic universe does not allow for YOLO-type madness. You can't always muscle your way to victory or get by without expertise. The people best prepared to survive in the soul system are those who understand engineering, physics, mathematics, and other scientific disciplines. You have to know how to fix your ship. You have to know how to treat injuries in zero-g. You have to be a master botanist. 
Okay, not sure on that last one, but still, you get the point. You can't just know how to kick ass. You have to be educated and know how things work in order to survive and thrive. Anyways, that's the list. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please do give it a big thumbs up. Um, comment down below and add to this list. Tell me all of the rules that I missed. I'm sure there are millions. Yeah, at least a few hundred. Um, anyways, for now, uh, subscribe to this channel. Hit that notification bell so you don't miss a thing. Uh, my name is American Ben, and I'll catch you next time. Generation Films, peace.